And so I'll start. So uh, hey, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Roy. Good to see you all. Um, I'll be talking about uh, argument passing or guidelines and the aliasing. Um, I should start by saying that uh, uh, I'm not an expert. Uh, I'm just uh, like one of you guys. Uh, if there's anything here that you think is not right or doesn't look uh, correct, please feel free to uh, teach us, to tell us. Uh, I'm really, I'll be grateful for this to be a discussion. Um, so my name is uh, Roi, Roi Barkan. Uh, I live in uh, Tel Aviv. I've been doing C++ for quite a lot of years now. And currently, I'm working with Eastra uh, Research. We're a company in the financial sector doing high-frequency trading. Uh, you've probably already seen some high-frequency traders uh, in this conference uh, as well already. Um, obviously, we're looking for uh, great, uh, talented people doing uh, hard stuff in C++ and, uh, and around uh, technology and math and stuff. And uh, I've joined the Core CVP meetup group uh, during uh, COVID. It was a really uh, nice uh, relief for me during a stressful time to uh, meet some uh, nice people and uh, interact uh, with people online, uh, and which I think is really cool. And so we're, I'm really grateful for this uh, opportunity for Core CVP. And if anyone, any of you, you know, wants want to get more of this uh, vibe, you're, you're welcome to join the, the monthly meetups. And uh, I try to participate as much as I can whenever I'm in the audience, and I encourage you to participate, ask questions. I'll be <clears throat> really, really, um, I'll, try, I'll try to, to answer as, much, as best as I can. OK, so uh, let's uh, start, let's dive in. Um, you heard the Strauss Group tell us yesterday about uh, the C++ core guidelines. And uh, this talk is about uh, guideline F16, okay, which basically says that uh, if we're writing a function and we want to pass uh, input parameters to the function, uh, that's, those are parameters that are uh, getting in and, and nothing gets out uh, related to them. Um, the guideline says that uh, cheaply copied types should be passed by value and others by reference to const. Okay, so passed by value versus passed by reference to const. And uh, the guideline also gives us a reason about that, uh, why, why this uh, guideline exists. And uh, it's because those uh, let the caller know that uh, those arguments will not be modified by the function, cannot be modified. And, and they allow initialization of our values. However, this reason doesn't really tell us uh, about uh, the difference between uh, uh, by value and reference to const and when each should be used. But if uh, one would read deeper into the, the guideline description, there is uh, some uh, mention of that. And basically, um, um, the def definition of cheap to copy is not really uh, a hard guideline, a hard definition. But they say that it should be something like two or three words, like doubles or pointers or references. And the reason uh, for doing that, for copying these or doing these cheap uh, uh, types by value, is uh, because of simplicity and safety. And uh, the guideline also said that it should be faster. Um, so, so that's the basic idea. That's what we'll talk about today. Let's uh, uh, wait, wait a few minutes for people to settle down. OK, great. Um, so uh, I, I should also note that uh, you know, Strasserup told us about this last uh, in-person uh, committee meeting in Prague last year. And in that meeting, Herb Sutter, the chairman of the committee, um, he also talked about a little bit about this topic. That's one of his pet peeves, I have to say, uh, talking about uh, the very core of the language, how to pass in arguments, pass arguments out, error handling, et cetera. And he also, uh, as you can see in this uh, top line of, of his slide, uh, uh, reiterated that uh, uh, guideline, that uh, we should pass by value something that is cheap to copy or move, and otherwise pass by const reference. OK? Let's uh, wait a little longer. And uh, so here are a few examples. As you can see, my code is a little small. If you are having tr har trouble seeing, uh, I'll try to, uh, you know, to, to read along with you. But basically, we have uh, four functions in here uh, that are very, very similar. All of these functions, they accept a vector of, of, of objects and, a, and another uh, element. And they, they perform an operation for each item on the vector and the element. OK, so the first operation is scale down. We'll uh, get a, a vector of many, many items. I want to, to divide all of them by some specific constant. OK, and the second uh, uh, is for slightly larger objects, like a point. A point is something in the 2D or 3D uh, uh, you know, physical space is something that's like something like two or three doubles, maybe. Um, <clears throat> so again, I want to move many points uh, by, by some other point. Um, 
And again, uh, we see that uh, it's, I consider it a small or cheap to copy, so I uh, do it by value. Okay, and then as we grow from a point to maybe a matrix, and I have uh, potentially considered something like a video game where I have uh, many, many rotation matrices for many, many objects in my game, uh, depicting uh, with, like, the direction that each object uh, is pointing at, and I want to move my camera, so I need to rotate all of the objects uh, at once. So again, I, I want to uh, go and multiply many, many matrices by, by one matrix, and the, 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 this rotation matrix might be larger and not so cheap to copy, so I go and uh, adhere to the guideline and, and copy by const reference. And, uh, or I pass the argument by cost reference, sorry. And the last argument, uh, uh, add suffix. Again, I have a vector of many, many strings. I want to add a suffix. Again, a string is a complex uh, object. Where copying it might involve uh, uh, you know, memory uh, allocations, et cetera. So uh, I would, I, again, adhere to the guideline and do things by cost reference. Okay, so here are these uh, uh, examples. They seem to be uh, working uh, as the guideline suggests. But, uh, but as we can see, I particularly chose these uh, examples as those are very, very similar functions doing very, very similar things, but on different types. So one might think, hey, maybe we can write this once instead of doing all these four things. Uh, why shouldn't I go and, uh, and write a single template, like an apply function? Okay, and the apply function can accept maybe a container and, a, and an, an element and an operation and just go and apply the operation on each and every item in the container, okay? The question is, how should I write this uh, template? Should I uh, get this extra element by value or by const reference? Okay, so and that's uh, and, and how and how can I write something that is uh, that works good for, for each and every uh, type of, of value that I use? It knows uh, automatically if the type is cheap to copy or not cheap to copy, and uh, do that. Okay, so that's basically you know what, what I'll try to uh, talk about in this. Uh, 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 today and, and try and give us ideas on how to do it. Uh, so before uh, trying to give my own, uh, uh, my, my own solution and my own advice, let's see what uh, uh, STL currently does. There are already template algorithms that work on many, many types. How are they usually uh, dealt with in, inside the STL? So the most common way that STL uh, handles these things is by using the const uh, reference approach, okay? I think that the main uh, motivation around that is that even cheap to copy items, they can, they, they're better to be passed by value, but it's not so harmful to pass them by const reference, okay? And on the other hand, passing a hard, uh, like an expensive to copy item by value can be very, very costly. So many, many STL algorithms, they just do const reference for each and every type. And we have uh, two examples here. One is the um, std colon colon plus, uh, like function object that uh, just adds any two types of, 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 of elements. Those elements are usually small and cheap to copy when we, when we think about that, but still the uh, STL does that by const reference. They, they prefer to err to the side of caution. And uh, another example is the remove uh, algorithm. I don't know if you all remember it. This is an algorithm that takes a, a range of elements and tries to uh, uh, basically move everything that uh, is not equal to a specific value up to the front of the range and the, and, and the value itself will be kept at the end of the range so we can just uh, discard it uh, later on if people remember the erase remove here. Okay, so uh, both of these examples, they use const reference and most of STL uses const reference. Still, there are cases where the STL does uh, pass by value. Okay, one, is, one of those cases are cases where a copy is needed anyway. Okay, so in the accumulate uh, algorithm in STL, there is some initial value that uh, the algorithm will need to use, modify, and then return. Okay, so there's a copy that's needed to be done anyway, and uh, the STL just chooses to just accept uh, the, the value given uh, by value, uses it, and, and return it. There are other cases where the STL goes for copy or pass by value instead of pass by reference, just because of safety. Okay, so this uh, example is Another way to do uh, the scale down uh, example that I wrote before, I want to divide uh, every element of a range uh, with one uh, specific element. I use the uh, STD bind uh, algorithm to basically take uh, a general divide and bind a single element. This A element, I want to bind it in, okay? And uh, this uh, bind algorithm does actually pass by value and it takes a copy, okay? It doesn't use a reference. 
regardless of whether this A type is cheap to copy or expensive to copy. And the reason uh, it does that, I believe, is, due to, is for safety reasons. Okay, there's a concern that uh, this bind result or this bind operation might outlive or live uh, longer than this A uh, element. So uh, STL decided to, to, to take things by value to, to take a copy just for safety. So that's what the STL does. There's no attempt to be generic and to uh, choose one, of, one approach or the other based on whether T is cheap to copy or not. It's just based on uh, you know, what makes most sense for the specific algorithm. Um, and before we dive into you know, a different, uh, a suggested approach that uh, tries to see if things are cheap to copy or not, I want to discuss uh, an elephant in the room about uh, the difference in meaning between passing by value and passing by points reference. And that difference is called aliasing. I don't know if you've heard about it. Can you maybe raise your hand if you've heard about aliasing? Okay, so a nice portion, but uh, I'll still be uh, maybe uh, you know, learning with you uh, something uh, new. And uh, <clears throat> the basic idea is that when I accept a value as a reference to const, um, I, I'm not allowed to change the value itself, but the value might change as I'm running. Yes? I can try and, <laughs> I'm sorry, the AV guy is, uh, uh, yeah, I, we tried to, well, I'm sorry. So anyway, here's the scale down uh, uh, function. And uh, it's just the one that we've seen before, but it accepts uh, a const reference to, to the double A. a. And uh, consider the case where I try and uh, scale down the vector by its first element, okay? So I want, to, so I have a vector of, of, of doubles or vector of elements. I want to make sure that the first one gets divided into one and all the rest of the elements get divided by that same value to, to keep, to maintain their ratios, okay? And this is actually uh, uh, sort of a bug. Th this will not uh, give you the result that you expect. I don't know if you, if you see it, but uh, we can go to Goldbolt and see it. Um, so here's an example where See, I have a vector of uh, three uh, twos. That's, uh, I think here I can easily increase the size oh, or increase it, I guess. Um, so I have a vector of three twos and I want to scale it down by the first item, okay? I want to scale it down so that they will all become one, I guess, right? And uh, the result, unfortunately, is one, two, two. The first item gets scaled down and the, the, the other ones do not. Um, do, can anyone maybe try and explain what, what's going on here? Why, uh, why that's the effect that we're seeing? So. Uh, you have divided by the first element and then you change it. The very first action is to change that element you divide by. Yes, that's true. So the thing is that although the A is a reference to inside the vector, okay, so as I go through in the iteration, my first uh, iteration, I divide uh, um, that first element by itself. It becomes one, okay, and then, uh, a is just one, okay? So on, the, on each and every other iteration, I divide all the elements by one, okay? So uh, I, instead of getting um, the first element divided by two, the second element divided by two, and the third element divided by two, I get the first element divided by itself. It becomes one. And then the second element and third elements will be divided by one, okay? Which is not what I expect. So that's a tricky thing and something that uh, is easy for people to miss. Um, any questions about that? Okay. Okay. So the comment is that uh, compilers assume that there is no aliasing in many cases, even though the standard says that they, they should not. And I actually believe that's not the case. The, def the default for compilers is to assume aliasing, but they work hard to try and uh, prove it when there is no aliasing to to, uh, to, to work with it. Um, there are some. Uh, uh, non-standard flags that you can pass to the compiler to tell it to tell the compilers to try and be a little more uh, uh, lenient and non-conforming, but those are, can be risky. Um, so another uh, example that's more of a real-world example, although I think the first one is kind of drives the point, it again relates to the uh, remove algorithm and the erase remove idiom. And uh, in this case, look at this example where I try to take a, a range of uh, of elements or a vector of elements, 
and, uh, and try to remove the maximum one, the, like the, the top one. And uh, in this case, I, I know that I, I, that top element, that maximum element might actually uh, exist in many duplicates, and I want to remove all of them, okay? So this erased removability tries to just look for the maximum element in the vector. I get a pointer to it, and then I add, call the remove idiom to just move everything uh, up front except that those maximum elements and erase the, the end. And this seemingly, uh, you know, I guess, uh, nice looking code is actually a bug and we'll see a little later on uh, the, bag, the bug inside code Godbolt and uh, some ideas on how to fix it, okay? But again, the, the, the main, the reason for the bug is aliasing, that max element and even, the, the, even if I perform the star operation on the max element, I do not get uh, an actual value, but I get a reference to inside uh, that uh, uh, vector that I'm, the remove will then uh, go ahead and act on, okay? So this is all tricky stuff, as you probably understand, and it's tricky in uh, two uh, different aspects. First of all, uh, to us humans, when we read the code, we usually don't think about it. We don't really think about the fact that my reference might actually be uh, a reference to inside some other range or some other area in memory that I'm acting on and changing. So this could lead to strange and unexpected, usually rare bugs. And uh, on the other hand, it's also uh, uh, tricky for the computers because the computers are actually are usually just seeing things on the other way around. They have to assume aliasing, okay? And uh, whenever they, they see something and they're not sure about, they will cons think that uh, aliasing might be in play. And whenever I change something in my memory, they will, will think that, that other const reference objects that they have might have changed as well when I was writing in memory. So they will uh, pessimize the performance. They will get, you will get uh, some uh, potentially uh, um, large performance uh, impacts, okay? And uh, to give you some uh, example, or try to look for a really, really uh, edge case, a really extreme case where performance gets affected. So this is an example, where, again, very, very similar to the ones I've se we've seen before. I go over many, many items, I accept the coefficient, but in this example, I go and I multiply each and every item by, uh, for example, the hyperbolic sinus of that coefficient, okay? And uh, there's a link to Godbolt here. We might uh, look at it a little later on. Um, but uh, the thing is that the compilers, because they see that uh, this coefficient gets passed by reference, there's a lot of per performance optimizations that might be done and the compiler uh, refrains from doing um, because of that uh, risk that perhaps the coefficient is pointing to inside uh, the array V that uh, we're uh, changing or working with. So what are the types of uh, opportunities that the compiler might do and is, is you know, deciding not to do because of these uh, uh, references? I don't know if anyone has ideas around it. But first and foremost, it has to do with registers versus memory, okay? Um, this uh, uh, coefficient can, can, can live inside a re register, okay? And I can potentially load it once and then uh, run with it across the, like with that register uh, across the entire uh, array of that coefficient. But because there's a risk that uh, uh, the address of that coefficient is inside the address of the array, the compiler uh, is, uh, no, can, can, can take the chance it needs to load from memory that same coefficient from its address time after time, iteration after iteration, okay? It can't uh, rely on the uh, values uh, not changing throughout the iteration, and that's, uh, that's a problem. If we heard the uh, lecture about caching and cache-friendly uh, code uh, yesterday, you should know that, know that this is not much of a performance uh, issue. The fact that we're loading the same address over and over again it's, you know, it, it can be a performance hit, but not so much because usually that address will be in level one cache. Um, second thing has to do with vectorization, okay? Vectorization is the way that uh, compilers uh, try to uh, basically fuse uh, several operations into, into one, uh, especially for arithmetic uh, operations like uh, multiplications, additions, et cetera. The, the, the most uh, new uh, uh, CPU architectures can perform a multiple, like four multiplications uh, at once or eight multiplications at once in what's called vectoric operations. And uh, the compiler can uh, try and uh, perform, you know, like uh, the fourth, like have iterations where on each iteration it, m it works on multiple elements in the vector. And again, if the compiler is concerned that perhaps uh, that coefficient lives inside that, those multiple elements, some of them might, uh, and, and as the, we do those operations, it might change uh, or impact the coefficient, it's not allowed to do it, and that uh, can cause uh, uh, you know, the, the compiler to miss uh, on that opportunity. And uh, uh, third is, uh, has to do with expression hoisting, just trying to look for invariants that live inside the loop, 
and move it out of the loop. In this case, uh, this is uh, very, very meaningful. Uh, in, in, in this example, uh, where this hyperbolic sinus can be something that's uh, costly, and uh, when a human reads it, uh, they will, they will think, let, let's say, I run this hyperbolic sinus just once on the coefficient, and, uh, and keep that uh, uh, value, keep that uh, result as a temporary uh, result, and just multiply everything by that temporary result. And again, the compiler cannot do it because of the, of the concern that uh, perhaps the coefficient might change throughout the iteration. So it needs to call uh, this hyperbolic sinus time after time, iteration after iteration, which can be costly. Okay, so these are uh, uh, various uh, um, uh, no opportunities that are missed, and it's hard to know uh, what's missed. Uh, so how important can it be? And this is an extreme example, and uh, I don't know if you can uh, guess or not, but I ran uh, this benchmark in Wikbench, and if I run the same function uh, and pass th this uh, double by, by reference, it's 25, 27 times slower uh, than by value. I actually ran it again uh, with sinus and not hyperbolic sinus, and it was actually 40 times uh, uh, slower by reference than by value, which is, I think, uh, really, um, can be, can be surprising, especially if this is your you know, hot loop inside your code. Uh, I don't know if anyone has questions or comments about that. If you like, I think we have some time, so we can go and look a little bit at the, uh, at the gold bolt and on what's done here. And um, so this is the code. I won't uh, linger uh, on it too much, but we can see that, uh, that I have a by ref uh, uh, function and a by val function, which basically do the same thing, uh, but, but only accept the argument by value or by reference. And uh, without really looking too much uh, uh, into the assembly, we can see that uh, the by ref uh, uh, implementation, here's the call to uh, hyperbolic sinus, and it's done inside the loop, okay? There's a loop here, and hyperbolic sinus uh, happens inside the loop. And if we go to the by val implementation, it's a little longer, but again, we can see, I believe the, yeah, uh, here's the call to hyperbolic sinus, and that's done outside of the loop. The loop only starts here, okay? So the compiler knows to hoist it, perform the, that once, and then just multiply over and over. We can also see, by the way, that there's uh, a lot of usage here of uh, XMM registers, which is, which is the compiler's way of doing, of saying that there's a vectorization done. It performs several iterations at once. Okay, uh, questions? Let's uh, continue then. Um, so, um, how could we see that the operation is vectorized? Yeah, it, it's tricky and it's not, uh, uh, it's not too important, but basically um, the most vectoric operations in, uh, in, in assembler uh, in x86 they usually uh, uh, utilize these special registers called XMM128 and uh, YMM128, et cetera. So, and, and, uh, um, yeah, and uh, the assembler instructions themselves there, when they say uh, uh, the PD uh, suffix is for. So, so without any uh, explicit hint in the code, the compiler could uh, vectorize it? Yeah, this, yeah, basically yes. Again, I managed to, yeah, okay, cool. Um, so moving on. Um, so as you can see, this aliasing, aliasing thing can be very, very dramatic for performance. So the compilers really try to uh, work really hard to see if they can prove that two pointers or uh, two references or a reference and a pointer are actually, uh, are they pointing to the same object or not? Is there aliasing? Okay, and uh, whenever they can prove that the aliasing is uh, impossible, they will uh, uh, act on it and give you uh, the performance that they, that they want, and they, can as and they will assume it. But this proof is uh, hard, but uh, there's a lot of work on it. Um, in, in the C language, there actually, there's actually a way for the developer to tell the compiler, hey, I know that these two pointers do not overlap. That's a keyword called the restrict, okay? And in the C language, if, if I have an argument that's of the type a restricted pointer, okay, like, you know, there are you know, volatile pointers or, or static ones, et cetera, et cetera. So restrict is another type of modifier uh, that can be done. And, uh, and see, if I use a restricted pointer, then I basically promise to the compiler, anything that I access through this pointer will not be accessed by any other pointer uh, in, in the life type, in, in the code block where this restricted uh, pointer lives, okay? And that's a very, very strong, uh, uh, you know, guarantee that the uh, developer can tell the compiler, the compiler can use it, it's really, really good. 
And there's been uh, several efforts to add this uh, uh, restrict keyword into C++, but uh, so far uh, it's not in the standard, and there are some good reasons for it. Um, and, and mostly it's because uh, unlike C in C++, we have uh, function overloading, okay? And, and the same uh, uh, function, you know, I can write it uh, one implementation for, uh, for an argument of type T, another one for a const argument of type T, right? And the, the question is, do I need a separate overloading for restricted types, okay? And uh, this is, these are things that aren't relevant for C, but are relevant for, for C++. Uh, is this another, you know, there's the, uh, the common uh, nomenclature CV qualifier, right? Const and volatile. Do we want uh, CVR qualifiers, const, volatile, restricted, const, restricted, volatile, restricted, et cetera, or not? So that's a, a really tricky thing. Also, in C++, unlike in C, there, there are references, not just pointers. Perhaps they need to be uh, looked at differently. Uh, templates is another uh, issue. Yeah, do I need, is, is there a different template uh, for a vector uh, of restricted uh, uh, T? Uh, uh, you know, compared to a vector of t, or are they the same type? Do they decay from one another, right? Like, because you know that uh, references and non-references, or L value and R value, are different uh, template types. But do, do we have? Do we want the same for restricted? These are all very difficult questions, and uh, the uh, C++ committee couldn't really make up their mind or get a good uh, sense of what's a good solution that will uh, make sense to uh, most uh, people. Um, so, um, because of that. Um, there's, uh, because of those issues and the fact that the restrict is also relatively wide, uh, whenever I put a restrict on, on one object, I, basically, I guarantee that uh, any other access to that uh, pointed to object will not uh, overlap with it. There are some uh, attempts right now, and there were in the past, to add to the C++ standard some narrower uh, guarantees. There was uh, some proposal of defining uh, what's called alias sets. Okay, and one, one could put uh, like an attribute around uh, some of the variables saying that they belong to a specific alias set. And uh, basically tell the compiler, hey, if I have a pointer that belongs to one alias set and another reference or another pointer that belongs to another, uh, then I can guarantee and the compiler can know that those cannot alias uh, within each other. There was some work in the standard around it, but uh, it stopped around 2015. I'm not sure why. Um, there's, there's recently another uh, effort that started uh, during uh, COVID actually. Uh, around uh, introducing a new word to the language called the uh, disjoint. And there are some, excuse me, some uh, thoughts about uh, uh, actually making it a qualifier, similar to restrict, but with a different uh, meaning. Another uh, approach was to just add something like std colon colon disjoint, uh, a, a new function in STL where that I can call it, similar to, I don't know, like a static assert or something. I can call uh, std disjoint with a set of two uh, uh, arguments. And uh, basically by that, it, it will not cause actual code to be generated. It's more like uh, an assertion telling the compiler that I attest that these uh, 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 two regions or these two pointers are, are disjoint. They, they do not alias with each other. And the idea is that uh, uh, in release mode, uh, the compiler will not need to check it. It will just work with it. But maybe in debug mode in, or in some uh, analysis mode, it can be checked and uh, alerted on. So these are all attempts to put uh, things similar to this in the standard. But Nothing is uh, yet uh, final. Um, so these, that's uh, all I have to say about aliasing. If you have any questions, that's a good time. And uh, uh, one more thing that I want to tell you is that uh, if I write my own uh, template library, uh, another um, approach that I like to do is to give power to my user, to whoever uh, is, is using my code. If I write a function that uh, you know, accepts a, a, an object by reference, I want to give them the, the ability to pass things by value if they like, or the other way around. And uh, it's actually not that hard in many cases. So if I have a, a function like uh, the std bind that uh, has to work, only works with by value, okay? I can use std colon colon ref. This is, some, this is a facility that existed in C++ since 98. It, uh, it basically uh, generates a reference wrapper, which is an object that uh, contains a pointer to uh, the, the, the T object and has uh, uh, casting operators to cast things uh, into, uh, into a reference to the object T. So std colon colon ref is basically a very small object that is cheap to copy. And uh, if, if you pass it by value, it's semantically almost as if you pass it by reference. Okay, so if, I have, if there's a template function that accepts things by value, I want to uh, pass it something that's expensive to copy. I can sometimes use the std colon colon ref to do it. It's not very easy. The, the template uh, algorithm needs to sometimes take that into account because again, all I have with this uh, new type is that it, it's convertible through an, a casting operator to T reference and not much more. 
So uh, there are algorithms that will not work uh, uh, with that uh, approach. And if I write my own algorithms, I try to make them uh, as compatible as possible with uh, std colon colon ref. The other way is also possible, okay? If I have a function that assumes uh, uh, that wants to pass, to get things by const reference, and I want to pass it something by value, I can also do it by actually forcing the creation of a temporary object, forcing a copy, and then giving it, a, giving the function a const reference to that uh, temporary copy. Okay, and this is what's uh, uh, done in here. Um, yep, with uh, the decal type vec colon colon value type thing. Okay, where actually I call this erase remove idiom, but instead of passing it uh, just the result of uh, the max element, I force the, uh, uh, the compiler, I force the code to create a temporary object. Okay, I call a missing calling a constructor here, and I'm passing it the reference to that temporary object. Okay, and many times, especially if things uh, get uh, inlined, uh, the compiler will figure out what I'm doing. They, it will understand that this that uh, uh, there is no aliasing that can be that can happen here because this const reference uh, that's getting templated is into the stack and not into uh, the heap, etc. And uh, you, you should get uh, some performance uh, improvement if you're doing those things. And also, as we've seen before, it's actually a different, uh, a different, you know, a functional uh, result. Um, there's also, instead of uh, writing this uh, not so nice decal type, uh, colon, colon, vec, uh, et cetera, there are some uh, nice helper functions that you can find online uh, called uh, std, colon, colon, val. We can, we can look at that uh, uh, soon. So here's the example. And again, um, what we're doing here is that yeah, I have a vector that has uh, four ones and a single two element. Okay, I want to remove that two. Okay, I, so here's one copy, I'll create another copy called v2. And uh, this uh, first line is uh, what, might, what, what people might think of as the intuitive uh, way to do it, which is calling the erase remove idiom by uh, invoking the, the max element, okay? And in the, in the second one, I do this uh, decal type uh, uh, trick. As you can see that uh, uh, if we run this code, then this, the first vector um, actually has a size of two, okay? So out of the five elements, three were removed during this process, which is totally not what we expected. We wanted just this one maximal element to be removed. And uh, with this uh, new trick, uh, we managed to uh, get that down and actually remove that one item that we wanted. Okay, questions around that? Okay, cool. And uh, um, std x colon colon val is sort of like the opposite of std colon colon ref. It's a v relatively small and nice uh, function. You can see that I use it here instead of doing the decal type thing. And the way to implement it is just a single liner. Um, so the val function, it, it will be a template and it will basically just uh, remove the reference, okay? So if, if it receives a reference, the reference will get removed, okay? And uh, there's all actually, uh, uh, there was a suggestion in the past to add such a function into the standard and it was called the decay copy, okay? Because it decays uh, pointers and the uh, references into actual uh, values. But it's not in the standard, and not, I don't think there's you know, a lot of uh, voices, a lot of uh, uh, promotion to move it into the standard. Okay, so that's, uh, so that's uh, giving power to the caller, and of course I lost my slides. Okay, questions? Cool, uh, moving on. Um, so now we can... Uh, go back to our initial question, how do I write a, a single algorithm that uh, knows whether to get things by value or by const reference uh, based on whether a type is cheap to copy or expensive to copy? And uh, the, the first uh, idea that I want to show you is not mine, it's actually uh, an idea from Herb Sutter himself. A few months or almost a year after the uh, Prague talk, uh, Herb Sutter gave a similar talk about that same uh, subject. Um, on CPP call, and he actually gave his own idea and his own approach as to how to do it today. He also uh, has a suggestion of how to do it uh, in the future with uh, using a new keyword called the uh, in auto. Uh, but uh, his approach, you see the text is relatively small here, so I copied it uh, to a new slide, but this is basically what he's uh, suggesting. Okay, he's saying let's uh, create um, a context per Boolean, okay, a, a Boolean that's known in compile time called should pass by value v, okay, and its value will be um, whether uh, the object of type t is uh, trivially copyable and whether its uh, size is smaller than some number, in this case smaller than eight bytes. And uh, 
Then Herb said that uh, whatever function foo that I have, I can just implement it twice and use the C++20 requires keyword to constrain those two uh, uh, alternatives. So the function foo will uh, have two implementations. Actually, th they will be the same, but just the, the argument type will be different. And the uh, requires clause will ensure that the compiler won't get confused and won't uh, uh, complain about uh, ambiguities because the compiler will know to choose the right one for the right types. Okay, so that's Herb's suggestion. You can see that the suggestion is, um, you know, it was, uh, I have to say, it was a straw man that he uh, proposed. I don't think he st fully stands uh, behind it, but uh, it has uh, the, the um, disadvantage that there's a copy paste going on here. The entire implementation has to live twice inside both foos. Okay, and one would think that maybe you could, uh, um, you know, move that implementation into a third function, but then I would ask is that third function, how will that uh, accept its argument? by value or by const reference. So it's kind of like a cyclical thing that might not be easy to, to deal with. Um, so that's one of these advantages. But I also have some other thoughts about uh, this approach and uh, about what uh, might be good or bad in it. And uh, let's uh, uh, start uh, with, you know, with some of them to, might, uh, to maybe enlighten us. So first of all, you can see that uh, this uh, should pass by value v is very, very similar to a concept being declared. Okay, and still in uh, uh, Sutter's uh, Example, he, you went for a context for bool and not for a concept, okay? And you can't think that uh, um, he wasn't a viewer of concepts, right? This is Herb Sutter, he's the chair of the C20, and he uses the requires clauses right here in that example. So he could have, had a, could have created a concept called should pass by value, but he chose not to. He chose to go with a context for bool. Does anyone have any idea or, or, or thought about why he might have done it? Okay, so I have one potential suggestion which has to do with specialization, okay? Um, a context for bool is something that can have this uh, uh, default uh, uh, value and anyone can use template specialization to specialize for their own types. So if I have my own type that maybe I think is uh, cheap to copy or should be passed by value, although it doesn't meet these specific uh, rules, I can go ahead and do a specialization of should pass by value v for my own type and say it's equal to true. And the, even the other way around, if I have a small, uh, type that's trivially copyable, but I want to pass it by uh, reference, I can do it with specialization. Concepts, as far as I know, are the only template in C++ that cannot be specialized. You cannot do specialization for concepts. Okay? Um, Okay, so the question is, if I understand it correctly, um, whether using concepts or const extra boolean has a, a, creates a difference regarding uh, ambiguities and regarding uh, how the compiler knows to choose two different types that uh, meet the different requirements. And as far as I know, um, that specific uh, um, you know, issue of uh, how the compiler chooses between uh, one or another uh, uh, overload on, based on requires codes is not uh, directly related to whether the condition is a concept or just any other compile time boolean, okay? So, but, but thanks a lot. Um, okay, another thing that, uh, you know, that I thought about when I looked at this uh, uh, code was uh, why did he choose this, uh, uh, this condition and not something else? I, I don't think uh, Herb Sutter, uh, you know, thought a lot about it. I would uh, uh, maybe initially just uh, turn this uh, less operator to less or equal because I think that uh, eight is a, is a good uh, size even to be cheaply copied, but I don't know. It's, it's obviously not, not an easy question. Perhaps, uh, um, it's something to let a uh, compiler vendor choose for us. I'm not sure. And, uh, uh, and, and thirdly is, again, as I told, said before, um, this uh, re-implementation, this copy-paste of the entire function body is something that's really not pleasant and I would like to avoid. Okay, so, uh, um, yeah, and one, most, and one last thing is that, again, the, the aliasing uh, uh, issue where, um, Again, in, in this specific case, the function foo only accepts uh, one, one single argument, so there's less of a risk of, uh, of, of any aliasing with anything else. But, uh, but again, the, the implementation itself from a functionality standpoint might actually need to be different uh, on the const, const reference uh, implementation because it needs to take uh, aliasing into consideration. Which is, and uh, again, Sutter mentioned it a little bit uh, uh, in one of his comments, but uh, I, I don't know what, what a good solution might be. So uh, at least here's some other solutions that I propose. 
and uh, I'll be happy to talk to you about that as well. And uh, this solution actually doesn't have anything to do with C plus 20. It can, it's something that could have been done uh, earlier. And I basically use that same uh, uh, context for Boolean that uh, Herb uh, told us about. But instead of having two different uh, uh, functions with, uh, uh, with required clauses, I have just a single uh, function, but I use the uh, std colon colon conditional to choose the argument uh, type that I want to work with. Okay, so uh, copy or ref is a, is a type def, is a using declaration. Uh, we use, that uses the std column column condition or to choose either a type t or a const reference to t, okay? And uh, the condition that I use to choose between those two is first of all, the, um, this uh, should pass by value uh, that uh, Herb Sutter told us about. And also there's a force copy escape hatch, like something that uh, if someone asks me to copy something uh, by, by, by force to, 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 uh, to, to, to pay the cost, I, I will agree to that. And using this uh, mechanism, here's my uh, a, a template apply function, uh, where basically um, the function itself has to take the argument uh, by reference, by const reference, okay? Uh, there's, I couldn't find a good way to use this uh, copy or ref uh, construct as the, 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 ar the type of the argument of the function, okay? So, and if anyone has an idea, I'll be happy to hear about it. Um, but after I accept this uh, argument by uh, const reference, um, that's where I uh, go and create my own variable v, which is either a copy of that reference, or I, or I take a copy, or just another reference to that same uh, reference. Uh, yes, question. What's the use of the force copy? The, the escape hatch is part of the type. So oh. Yeah, okay, so uh, I'll talk about it. Uh, so the question was, uh, what's the use of the force copy escape hatch? And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll touch it uh, uh, a little later on, just, just in a minute. But anyway, with this uh, example, we can see that uh, um, at compile time for each uh, uh, value, for each instantiation of this uh, function apply, um, the uh, compiler knows uh, to, to basically get an argument by const reference and then either take an actual uh, variable and copy into it or just take another reference to that reference and the rest of the uh, code is exactly as we had before, just running with that uh, either new value or, new, or existing reference, okay? And uh, that way, at compilation time, the compiler should know exactly uh, how uh, these things uh, should work. And um, in case of by value, all the performance uh, benefits of uh, non-aliasing, et cetera, can, can take place. Um, and uh, now let's address this force by value thing. And the idea is that uh, I want to have, in this case, two types of escape hatches, okay? One is for the entire type, okay? I have a, a specific type that I know that uh, doesn't fall under this uh, basic rule for is trivially copyable in size of etc. So I can, I'm still using a context for bool and not a, um, and not a concept. So I still give uh, wh whoever uses, uh, uh, um, you know, my code or whoever wants to use the apply function, the way to override their entire type. Okay, so if I have a, a type called uh, the size of is uh, nine characters and not seven characters or nine bytes instead of seven bytes, they can go and uh, specialize and in, in, in opt into this uh, pass by value v, okay, so that's one thing. Uh, the force copy is actually used to uh, allow uh, um, the caller of, a, of an apply function to, uh, to override at the call site and not for the type. So think of a case where I have a type where in most cases I want it to be passed uh, by reference, but in one specific case where it's maybe inside the, uh, maybe a heavy loop or maybe I know that the aliasing might be going on here, then I want to force a copy only in this call site. So the type itself will remain the uh, uh, passed by value v equals false, but the copy or ref uh, for that type uh, with that uh, extra argument will be uh, true. So in that specific call site will be true. And then, there's- Then I just won't use uh, a copy or ref, I'll just use the type. Yeah, but I'm trying to write uh, one generic apply function or one generic template function that anyone can use, okay? But if it accepts the type, uh, ah, you're saying I'll tell you. Yeah, okay, so the idea is I want to write one template function that accepts any type that you throw at me, okay? And I want, to, uh, I want my code to either accept the type that you throw at me by value or by reference based on whether it's cheap to copy or not, just okay. like the guideline tells me, okay? And uh, I also uh, give you a way um, to uh, specifically on specific call sites say that I want this to be a, a pass by value, although my type is uh, maybe expensive to copy because I want to maybe avoid aliasing, et cetera. Okay, so 
Like, let's uh, take a short look at gold bolt here. And um, yeah, and, and you can see this this implementation. And uh, here you can see uh, these uh, uh, two types uh, of, of of calling this uh, this function. This apply either just by giving it uh, you know a vector and and, and uh, an element with the plus operator, or otherwise I I just I can use the an escape hatch and enforce things happening by uh, by value. Okay, so that's sort of like uh, the approach that I'm suggesting. Okay, questions? Cool. So we're getting to the end of the talk. Um, so my summary is basically that uh, argument passing, like uh, Herb Sutter likes to say, is indeed hard. It's, it's, things can be tricky. Aliasing is uh, one of the you know, you know, thorny uh, issues that uh, people can uh, uh, many times you know, not, not think about. It causes uh, rare bugs that are hard to find and the frequent performance losses that we need to uh, many times think about. And uh, by the way, I believe that uh, the next lecture over here in this uh, uh, room will uh, tell us a little bit about uh, ways to uh, find those, find those uh, performance uh, losses. Um, using C++ 20 concepts and requires clauses makes uh, it easier to, to catch these types of nuances and to write different implementations for different cases, but still things can be hard. It's still not, uh, not optimal. And, uh, Whenever I write templates, whenever you write templates, try to uh, uh, write it with care, uh, give power to your, user, to your users, think uh, about cases where they um, want to pass uh, reference wrappers to you, value wrappers, etc. That's uh, my basic uh, uh, talk. So uh, uh, thank you. Toda uh, Rabah. Yep, so I'm happy to answer questions if there are any. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the question was, was whether multiplying uh, item by item uh, two two vectors of doubles will that uh, suffer from aliasing or not? And uh, I think uh, the main question is where do you put the result? Okay. Because the the potential for aliasing might be uh, if if uh, wherever you put the result might alias with one of those two vectors. Okay. So if if you put the result back in one of the vectors and not in the other, then there is the risk of this uh, type of aliasing. Okay. The compiler will try to prove or disprove whether this aliasing occurs, but in many cases it's, it's really tricky, it's really difficult. I should say that C++ you know, tries to help you. Um, like uh, two pointers to do uh, uh, to, to doubles, they might alias, but two pointers to, do, to two different types, the compiler knows that they will not alias, right? So if you have uh, a pointer to an int and a pointer to a double, or a vector of ints and a vector of doubles, they, even though potentially one might uh, pass pointers to the same regions in area, this is not a, Legal C++ is undefined behavior, so the compiler will know about it and will not uh, uh, will assume that there is no aliasing. Okay. Similarly, you know there are some suggestions about doing uh, strong type diffs in C++. So one of the potential uh, uh, you know powers of strong type diffs is the compiler will know that two vectors of the, those two different types should not uh, alias with each other. But and, and so to, to your question, if you try to you know multiply item by item two vectors and one of them is also the result. Um, there is a risk that the compiler will, uh, will, you know, will, will have a, the concern of overlap and, and will, will suffer. Yeah, you should check it, of course. Yeah. yeah so, thank you for a great talk. Uh, one comment: the, um, I think the automatic way to detect whether to use uh, value or reference it changes the semantics of the function, or potentially. So that's something to note. Um, and uh, hope I'm not forgetting anything from the next talk, but I'll be in the second talk. Uh, is there any way like, for, for the compiler to let the uh, programmer know that, uh, that aliasing or potential aliasing is preventing a certain optimization? Yeah. Okay, so uh, the first question was, uh, or comment, was uh, related to the fact that uh, passing by reference or by value uh, changes the automatic way that the compiler chooses uh, overloads, uh, think, and, and that's correct. Yeah, so uh, that's why uh, you know if you write uh, overloads that accept these two types, then the compiler needs to choose uh, which one uh, which one to use, and it's, it can be tricky. And that's a correct comment. And the second question was about uh, uh, again, are there ways for the compiler to let you know that uh, something was missed? 
And the answer is that there are ways. It's not very simple. And uh, the next talk uh, uh, by uh, Ofek Shilon uh, should, uh, should, should give uh, some, some hints about those ways. OK, any more questions, comments? Cool, this has been a great pleasure. So thank you a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs>